If this is the first time you're hearing about the Readwise Reader app, it is currently one of the hottest apps in the world of book tech. Now, I've been using the old Readwise app for years to review my Kindle highlights to make sure I never forget the things I learn in the books I read, but the Readwise Reader app is a newer one that they just released in the last couple of years, and I have to say, it's quickly becoming my go-to place for reading not just books, but so much more. In this video, I'll be showing you all about the Reader app. I'm gonna start with my top 15 favorite features, then go into a little bit of optimization for using Reader on an e-ink e-reader. And then last, I'll be sharing some specific feature requests that I have that I would love to see in the future. Let me kick things off by showing you my favorite features of the app. Now, I do wanna say Reader is available on multiple platforms. You can use it on your computer, on your phone. And you could also download it on an e-ink e-reader that supports Android. So a lot of different versions of the app are out there. And depending on which one you're using, the features will work a little differently. The first feature I gotta show you are the keyboard shortcuts in the app. Readwise really made sure to make their reader app as easy to use as possible. And you can actually use this entire app without using a mouse at all. I just love scrolling through every single thing in my library using the keyboard only, even scrolling through the article and highlighting things. It is very intuitive once you get the hang of it. And they actually have a whole little menu over here to see all the shortcuts available to you. And I love this because apps don't always have keyboard shortcuts like this, so I really do applaud the Readwise team for prioritizing this from day one. The second feature I wanna talk about is not an earth-shattering feature by any means, but is a great quality of life thing to have, and I'm talking about the auto-highlighting feature. Normally, when you highlight some text, on the Reader app, it'll just show you the normal menu like you're used to seeing on your phone. But if you turn on the auto highlighting feature, it'll automatically highlight the second you highlight some text. This just removes one extra tap every single time you highlight. And again, if you're using the Reader app, there's a good chance you'll be highlighting and syncing those highlights to Readwise. So it's a great feature in general. And I just love having that extra removal of friction from my workflow. Similar to the auto highlight feature, you can actually just double tap a sentence or a paragraph, it'll highlight the whole thing for you. So again, they really made sure highlighting is as easy as possible. Now, my third favorite feature is regarding PDFs. Now, I use the Reader app every single day to read my morning prayers. And in those prayers, I like to highlight certain verses that I wanna pay special attention to to make sure I remember them properly. And normally when I highlight on my Kindle, for example, for PDFs, those highlights only stay on that specific Kindle. But with the Reader app, I can have access to those PDFs highlights on any device that I have the app installed on. This may sound very small, but I love having the ability to open up my PDFs on my computer and have the highlights there, then go on my phone, open it up there and have the same highlights available to me there. They just sync everywhere. There's no frustration about highlights not being there. Moving right along, the next thing I wanna show you is something that I'm calling the immersion watching feature. If you have a Kindle, you may have used the immersion reading feature where you can listen to the audiobook and read the book at the same time using the Kindle app, that is a great feature. But with the Reader app, you can take it one step further and do the same thing for YouTube videos. So say you save this YouTube video into the Reader app and you open it up, you can actually watch the video while reading the transcript of the video and have it automatically highlight the words that are being said out loud. It's just like listening to an audiobook while reading it, but this time you're actually watching a video and reading the transcript at the same time. And you can also highlight the transcript as you read it or watch it. So it's a very advanced feature for watching YouTube videos and making sure you take notes in an efficient way. For me, I love using this feature for longer videos like podcasts or hour long episodes with interviews, things like that. Or if you're in college and watching a YouTube video for a class or something like that, doing some research, this could also be very useful for you. So you can go back and revisit your highlights rather than watching the entire video. Next up, we have a feature called the feed. And I absolutely love this feature because it's a great way to subscribe to RSS feeds and news letters all in one place directly in the Reader app. So with your Reader app, you get assigned a special email address that you can use to subscribe to email newsletters. You can also personalize this email address, which is a new feature they recently added. So you can use this new email address for all your newsletters and have them sent to the feed within the Reader app. Once they show up in the feed, you can highlight them and read them just like any other article that you save into the app. But more importantly, I love this TikTok view that I'm calling over here. Well, on the phone especially, you can just scroll through 
through all the feed articles and pick and choose which ones you want to save and which ones you want to skip. It makes reading a lot more fun. My next favorite feature is called Ghost Reader. Now, essentially, this is a built-in AI in the Reader app. You can use Ghost Reader to highlight an entire paragraph and it can simplify the wording for you to make it easier to understand. You can also use Ghost Reader to summarize entire articles for you and a whole bunch of other things. It's a really handy feature, especially if you're using Reader for more advanced articles. Speaking of advanced stuff, if you are a power user, this next feature will be very useful for you. They have something called filtered views in the Reader app. So if you are using Reader for a whole bunch of different stuff, say you're saving articles, EPUBs, PDFs, YouTube videos, all sorts of different documents and stuff like that, you can use filtered views to easily filter out different things you want to see. So say, for example, you only want to see videos in your library that are not watched yet. So you don't want to see things that are in progress. You can actually do that by typing in a special query and having a filter view saved to your home screen. The possibilities with filtered views is endless. And I have to say, I think this is probably a fan favorite in the reader community. The next feature that I want to show you is the quick and lightning fast search available in the reader app. Now, reader is a great way to centralize all your reading stuff into one app and having all that available to you in one place has its perks because now you can do a search across all the documents that you have and quickly find anything that references your search term. So say, for example, I want to do a search for Ali Abdal in my reader app. I just type his name in and all of a sudden any article that I've saved that mentions his name will show up right away. It's a really quick way to go through your second brain. My next favorite feature is something that's very simple but very helpful. I love the ability to highlight images. On a Kindle, when you're highlighting, you can highlight text, but you can't highlight images that will be saved into the Readwise app. But if you highlight an image in the Reader app, it will be saved to Readwise, and you can revisit that image later on. So I find that to be very helpful. Now, this next one is very similar to the highlighting of images, but it's actually related to text. On a Kindle, if you highlight too much text in one book, it's actually going to truncate and limit how much of that highlighted text will be exported to third-party apps like Readwise. So if you ever use Readwise, before and highlighted a Kindle book, you may find some of your highlights are cut off at random places. You'll see the dot, dot, dot appear. And that is because the Kindle app has a limit to how much it can export to Readwise. With the Reader app, you don't have any kind of limit like that. You can highlight freely and as much as you want inside the Reader app. And all of those highlights will be synced over to your Readwise account. Now, this next feature is a really important one because I think a lot of people would benefit from it. It's called text to speech. Now, on a Kindle, if you want to listen to a book, you have to buy the audiobook to listen to it, which is usually a separate cost from the Kindle book. So you end up buying the same book twice. But with the Reader app, whatever article you save into the Reader app or any EPUB that you have in there, all you have to do is activate text to speech, and then a virtual voice will begin reading the text to you. This basically turns into a free audiobook for you for any article that you save into the Reader app. It's a really handy feature. And they're using something called Unreal Speech, which is this advanced virtual voice model that actually sounds very realistic. My next favorite feature is, again, a very small one, but I do appreciate it. Whenever I'm reading an article in the Reader app, I have this small little progress bar at the bottom. On the Kindle, you don't have any progress bar to indicate visually how far you are into a book. So I do appreciate having this nice progress bar in the Reader app to show me how far I am into the book I'm reading. This next feature is a relatively new one as of making this video. The Reader app actually has a way to share a public link to any article that you have in the Reader app with all your annotations included. So say you're highlighting an article that you found on the web for a research project, and you want to share that article with all your highlights and notes included in it with a colleague or something like that. You can just press the Share Public Link button, and all those annotations will remain in the article, and you can share that article with somebody else. My next favorite feature is something that's more of a personal preference, but I do like having both options available to me. You can read articles or EPUBs in any format you want. You can do it as a continuous scroll where you just keep scrolling up and down for an infinite amount of time until the book is finished. Or you can use a paging feature, which will divide up your article or book into pages. I love using the paging feature because it just makes it feel more like a Kindle book to me, and I'm really used to that. And also, they implemented this feature in a very unique way. Instead of turning pages left and right, you're turning pages up and down. This actually makes highlighting a lot easier. You can highlight between pages without having to swipe across the entire 
screen. It just makes so much more sense. Now, number 15 isn't really a feature, but I do want to say that I love how the Readwise team is constantly sending out updates transparently through their newsletter and on social media and how they're always putting out new updates for their app. I really think this app is only going to get so much better in the months and years ahead. When you compare that to a more established company like Amazon and their Kindle, they don't really share transparently what they're working on or what's going on and getting in touch with them is very difficult. With the Readwise team, they are a startup and I really love their mindset and their mentality and I just love working with them and I really cannot wait to see where their app is going in the future. Now, if you are using the Reader app on an e-ink e-reader, there are a few tips I have for you that you should consider using to make your experience a bit better. The Reader app is not yet optimized for e-ink, but they are working on making it better for e-ink devices. But for right now, here are a few tips to help you out. Now, the only e-readers that currently support the Reader app are ones that have Android, so you're probably using an Onyx Books device. And the first thing I'd recommend doing on any of those devices is downloading the Gboard keyboard from the Google Play Store. I really don't like the built-in Onyx keyboard. It doesn't really work too well, and I don't like the layout of it. So I prefer the Gboard a lot better. Typing on it, it feels much more natural and more like my phone. And I also like the ability to customize the number pad as well as autocorrect and having so many more options available to me. The next thing you should definitely take advantage of is voice notes. When you're using the reader app on your e-reader, use voice notes instead of using the keyboard entirely. That'll just make your life so much easier as well when taking notes. One other thing that I found very helpful on my e-readers is having the warm light and brightness controls available to me as shortcuts on the left and right side of the screen, especially while using it on the reader app to read stuff. You want to be able to quickly adjust the brightness if you're in different environments. I found that to be very helpful. And lastly, in Readwise specifically, there are a few settings you can change. There is one setting called reduced motion which will remove some of those extra animations to make reading on e-ink a bit more smooth and less jarring when you're scrolling around. There's also a setting to be able to change pages with the volume buttons, especially if you have a device like the Onyx Books Pama, having those volume buttons as page turn buttons is really cool. You can also switch between continuous scroll to the page mode like I talked about earlier, and you also have that auto highlight feature that I talked about earlier as well. It all is personal preference at the end of the day. In terms of my wish list for future improvements to the Reader app. I think the app right now is in a good place, but there are a few small things that I'd love to see in the future. The first is even better highlighting. On my Kindle right now, when I highlight text, it has a bit of a snapping effect where it'll automatically snap to the end of a sentence without having to select the individual character or punctuation. In the Reader app right now, when you're highlighting stuff, it does require very specific input, and I really hope they can make this as similar to the Kindle and make it a bit more pleasant when you're highlighting sentences. The next feature I would love to see in the future is text-to-speech available offline. I was recently traveling on a plane and I wanted to read a book with text-to-speech and I wasn't able to do that without Wi-Fi, which I didn't have. And that was the one time I really wanted to use that feature while I'm traveling around. So hopefully down the road they'll bring that. I did see on their website they have that on their roadmap, so hopefully very soon. And my last feature request is more specific to me probably, but I love the bookmarks feature on my Kindle, being able to bookmark specific pages in an EPUB or PDF. For example, my morning prayers, I like to divide different sections up with bookmarks and easily navigate to them. Right now, there is no bookmarking feature available for any kind of document in the Reader app. So hopefully down the road, that will be there too. Now, if you found this video useful, you'll definitely enjoy my other video showing you how I take notes on a Kindle while using the Readwise app. The Readwise app is the backbone to the Reader app, and it's a very essential part of my workflow. Link for that video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.